Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic system. So we have 4x cubed plus 3x squared y plus y cubed equals 8 and 2x cubed minus 2x squared y plus xy squared equals 1. And we're going to be solving for x and y values. Now notice that this, this system is special because if you look at each term here, you're, you'll notice that they're cubic. So this kind of tells us that we can use a special substitution. And we use this system not just for polynomial systems like this one, we also use it to solve some differential equations. And that method is replacing y with something like kx. Here k is a real number and we're just basically introducing a new variable. So let's go ahead and substitute that into each uh, equation here. So we're going to get 4x cubed plus 3x squared multiplied by kx plus k cubed x cubed. That's equal to 8. In the second equation, we get 2x cubed minus 2x squared multiplied by kx plus x multiplied by k squared x squared. And that's equal to 1. So now, we're, we're going to simplify this. Now, this kind of looks complicated, but we can simplify it more. For example, we can just multiply x squared by x. That's going to give us x cubed. So it's going to be 3kx cubed. And then from here, I'm getting k cubed x cubed equals 8. In the second equation, we get 2x cubed minus 2kx cubed and plus k squared x cubed. And that is equal to 1. Now, how do you simplify the system? You can just go ahead and factor out the x cubed from both of these equations and write the first one as x cubed times the quantity 4 plus 3k plus k cubed, which is equal to 8. And the second one gives us x cubed times 2 minus 2k plus k squared. And that is equal to 1. So if we go ahead and divide both of these equations side by side, we're going to be able to simplify this even more. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm, I'm going to divide the equation side by side. And from here, I can eliminate x cubed. So this gives me a cubic equation, obviously. When we cross multiply, let's go ahead and do that. From the top, I'm going to get k cubed plus 3k plus 4. And the bottom is going to be 16 minus 16k plus 8k squared. Let's go ahead and simplify this equation. Write it as a cubic k cubed minus 8k squared. And then I'm going to bring the negative 16k over here. So it's going to become positive 19k. And now I have 4 minus 16, which is equal to negative 12. And the whole thing is equal to 0. Now, this is a cubic equation. And obviously, if you're looking for rational solutions, then you can look at the divisors of 12 and check each one uh, to see whether there are solutions or not. But this is kind of like a special type of equation. And we've seen similar problems like this before, because if you carefully look at the coefficients, you're going to notice that the sum of the coefficients here is zero. Why? Especially focusing on the positive ones first. So 1 plus 19 is equal to 20. Negative 8 plus negative 12 is equal to negative 20. So the sum of the coefficients is equal to zero. What's that supposed to mean? It just means in a polynomial, if let's say you have a polynomial px and you have that p1 is equal to zero, this just means that uh, the coefficients, the sum of the coefficients is zero. Sum of coefficients is zero. Because when you replace x with one, you get p of one. And if that's equal to zero, that means that's the sum of coefficients. So this tells us that k equals one is a solution because p of one equals zero means that one is a solution. So having said that, we can just go ahead and factor this cubic. Since we know that k equals 1 is one of the solutions, we can actually reduce the power to quadratic. You can just use long division or synthetic division, whatever you do. But I'm going to just manipulate this expression to make it factorable. So k cubed minus k squared. To get negative k, 8k squared, I'm supposed to write, uh, I'm supposed to subtract negative, uh, I'm supposed to subtract 7k squared. There you go. But then I kind of have to balance it out with the 19k. And remember here, my goal is to get k minus 1 as a factor. And I'm getting it from k squared times k minus 1. So I'm going to be continuing the same pattern. 
So that means I'm supposed to add 7K from here and then 12K to make up for the 19 and then finally end up with minus 12 equals zero. So now when you group these terms, you can factor them. K squared times K minus one minus 7K times K minus one plus 12 times K minus one is equal to zero. Now, if you take out the K minus one, then you get K squared minus 7K plus 12 is equal to zero. And now here you can find two numbers whose product is 12 and whose sum is negative seven. Those numbers are negative three and negative four. As you know, this is a factorable trinomial. I can write it as K minus one times K minus three times K minus four is equal to zero. Great. Now, I, I got the K values from here. I already knew that K equals one, but I also got two other values. So now I got three K values. So let's start with each one. Like for example, let's uh, start with K equals one and see where this takes us. So remember, I had assumed that Y is equal to KX. If K is equal to one, that means Y is equal to X in the original problem. So let's go ahead and look at the original system and just plug in Y equals X. For example, if I take the first equation and hopefully you'll remember that the first equation was four X cubed plus three X squared Y plus y cubed is equal to eight. Now, if I replace y with x, I get four x cubed plus three x cubed plus x cubed is equal to eight. And from here, I get eight x cubed equals eight, which means x equals one. Since y is equal to x, that also means y equals one. So I get my uh, solution from here as an ordered pair, one comma one. But that's not the only solution because this is only from k equals one. Let's go ahead and use the second value. Let's say k equals three and substitute that. By the way, why did I use the first equation? It doesn't matter. You can use the second one and you'll get the exact same result because this is a system. So that's why I'm using just one of the equations. So in the first, uh, in the second equation, if you substitute, uh, you know, replace k with three, which is this one, then you're going to be getting four x cubed, right? And then replace. So by the way, this means k equals three means y equals kx, so y equals three x. So we're gonna substitute that into my first equation. That's gonna give me three x squared times three x, that's gonna be nine x cubed plus y cubed. If you cube three x, you're gonna get 27 x cubed and this is equal to eight. Let's go ahead and add these up. Four plus nine is 13, 13 plus 27 is 40. So this gives me 40 x cubed equals eight. And from here, I get X cubed equals one fifth and X equals cube root of one fifth. So you can write it as one over cube root of five. And later on, if you want, you can rationalize the denominator. But the Y value, since Y is equal to three X, I can just multiply X by three and get my Y value. And this gives us another ordered pair as a solution. All right, let's go ahead and use the third value, which is k equals four. So what happens if k is equal to four? This implies that y is equal to four x, because remember our assumption was y equals kx and I got the k values from there. And if you plug in y equals four x here, you get my, this is my original equation again, let me write it one more time. I'm using the first equation, but again, it doesn't matter if you use the second one. Replace y with four x, this gives me three X squared times four X. And then I'm supposed to write four X quantity cubed is equal to eight. This becomes four X cubed plus 12 X cubed plus 64 X cubed equals eight. And four plus 12 is 16. 16 plus 64 is 80. We get 80 X cubed equals eight. And X cubed becomes one tenth. From here, X becomes the cube root of one over 10 or one over cube root of 10. And since y is equal to four X, I can write it as four over cube root of 10. And this gives me another ordered pair. So since we have three different values for K, we got three different ordered pairs as solutions. And let's go ahead and put these together to see the whole solution set. And that's going to conclude our video. So the solution set is gonna look like the following. Our first pair, remember, was one comma one, which was pretty basic, right? You could just replace K with one, and that's what you get. The second one comes from one over cube root of five. So one of the answers. And then the other one is Y equals three times X, which is three times this. 
Again, uh, you could have rationalized the denominators. I didn't do it, but you can do it if you wanted. And the last value as an ordered pair is going to be 1 over cube root of 10, comma, 4 over cube root of 10. And those are going to be all the solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.